All right, so we're gonna watch a video together that Foreign Money found about a guy who ruined his life basically by trading. I think this is a very interesting thing to share with you guys because you know a lot of us go through these things. The rules are not there to make money. The rules are there to protect you, to protect you from doing self harm to yourself, mentally and financially. Because you gotta understand, trading is gambling. He's saying a couple of things. He's saying you gotta have rules. That's obviously, you know, you gotta yeah, have some rules. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, trading is gambling. Yeah, what do you think of that? Trading is different. You do your research, you find an edge, which means that over time you would have a profitable advantage. And because you're managing your risk, you are again making it so that your edge plays out and then you're profitable. So it's more of a business model. Gambling is like, yo, I'm gonna see if I could you know, what this 20 can do. I'm going to see what this 50 can do and stuff like that. So to me, trading is not gambling, although people can turn it into gambling. But I think what separates trading from gambling, which is what I read and what I agree with, is that risk management and just basically the whole, the way you manage it as a business can change it from a gambling habit. I think this says like a lot about his mentality already. Like he's like, yeah, trading is gambling. I mean, come on. Like if you're already stepping into the market with that kind of mentality, then it's kind of, you know, you're maybe not. Yeah, you're off to a rough start. Yeah, yeah. But, but trading is not like any other gambling endeavor, you know, trading in trading. There's freedom. There's freedom to get in when you want, get out when you want. No one's forcing you to stay in trades. It's in the space of that freedom in trading that gives you the biggest advantage, but also the greatest disadvantage. Wait a second. Is he saying that gambling is better in some ways? When I started trading, I got fully blown addicted to trading. And at first it was just half my paycheck. You know, um, I could still pay my bills and uh, I would lose the paycheck, half my paycheck in the stock market and then um you know still struggle i would struggle you know i don't have that kind of personality where i'm going to casino and i can't stop or something right you know i've been to the casino maybe three times in my life but mm -hmm. you know i'm not like going there and i'm like suddenly out with like all my money's gone like I, I don't have that kind of personality but with trading you know i kind of felt like okay that one failed let me try again that won't fail. Let me try again. Gotcha. And then obviously then I had like, okay, it's not working. Like I'm losing a little bit, you know, too much. And then I went back to a course, but I definitely understand how somebody can, you know, come gotcha. back again, come back again. And, and so when that became normal, um, it got even worse and went to, now I was taking out loans. I was getting in depth to fund myself in the stock market and I'm taking out risky loans. I'm talking 80 plus interest rate. Um, what? you know, I'll, how can it be 80 percent, bro <laughs> so wait you're paying like on ten thousand you're paying like eight thousand or that's crazy man that's crazy i've never heard of this in any other country that's brutal i don't mean to laugh i'm not laughing at this i'm just laughing at the idea of 80 percent that's yeah. every ten dollars he's born he's paying eight on top basically when i was losing i started to realize okay it doesn't matter how much money i have i just mm -hmm. don't have the skill so I just scaled yeah. down, like you said, I started doing like little flips and little things here with really small accounts. Yeah. And then I started increasing. So I remember taking on a loan that was 400% interest, <laughs> right? You know, so was, Bro, I think I was paying no like way. almost half of it <laughs> within the week. Who's he and going just to? interest alone. <laughs> yeah, I was taking out loans. Wait, 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 we got to search out this 400,000 loan. Yeah, by the way, we're not laughing at his situation no. at all or him. No. We're laughing at. Yeah, I don't see anything like that. That's not possible. That's, that's bro. How Whoever can... you want to finesse the life out of him. I went from having no debt to now owing 14, being $14,000 in debt. Keep in mind, I work a minimum wage in California. So yeah, that's, that's, um, that's basically half almost half my yearly salary right there but i also mastered i i would masturbate every time i lose or when i felt tense in the stock market to kind of you know this is what i found out about because i used to talk to people who had addiction um and what i found out is that when people are under high high amounts of stress they need an outlet for some people it's alcohol some people it's marijuana or other drugs narcotics whatever for him it's unfortunately that um that's why he went to that right away so it's it's just a funny thing to hear but I think that's oh. all that it is. I think, yeah, because I mean, unless you're sexually stimulated by numbers or profits or <clears throat> losing profits, you shouldn't be pushed to do something like that. But I think it's just an outlet. That's the mm. way he feels, I guess he can release tension. Yeah. So I think that's all that it, it really is. Okay. Kind of relax myself, but it, there you go. obviously yeah. that habit got carried over and I would just, at that point, I was just masturbating every time I lost. And sometimes when I blew an account, I was masturbating like 20, 30 times 
a jam. Okay, that's another addiction. So he, I think, likely addictive personality. Uh, disorder. I think so. You hear it in his wording. You hear it with this um, masturbation stuff. You can see where the problems are coming from, basically. And he might be a good trader. Like, I mean, he might have a good strategy and all that because he didn't make the 14K back. But I guess, like, the addiction side came out and it's what's yeah. ruining him. Yeah. Was he losing 30 times a day or? I didn't want to feel that pain. I didn't want to sit with reality because it was really painful to know I could have covered all my debt and I lost it all. So I remember two weeks ago, I was in max pain. I think I masturbated like 20 times a day. I was calling friends and family, you know, trying to seek some sort of, um, you know, peace in my mind because I was so in emotional pain. If you've lost, if you, like, do you do anything? <laughs> to, you like... asking me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking God to give me one more shot. Give me one more try in the stock market. Let me show you that I'm patient oh. and that I can. I lost like 601. Like I was trading. Um, it's when Kodak got the boost from the government to produce stuff for the vaccine. Mm. And long story short, I remember when I was trading stocks, stocks used to have my heart going upside down. I, it, I was so scared to jump in. I would jump in late and then everything would fall and I'd lose money. So stocks can be hectic is all I'm saying. Funny enough. Uh, the day after, I got in the market again. I got a loan, and I made money. I and it was, I was making money. I made money again, and I make money. The next day, I'm making money, and it got to the point where, um, you know, God actually gave me a second chance. He blessed me, and amazing. I had enough money to cover all my debt again. And yesterday, I lost it all. Oh, man. I think to your point in the beginning, this is a gambling issue. It's his tendencies that's killing him because he asked God for a chance. He says God gave him a second chance. He was profitable for some days and made back everything he borrowed. But the gambling side of him said one more, just flip it, you know, all or nothing. And he went for it and lost. But now I get it a little bit more because if you have the loan, you still want to make some money. So you actually get some money yeah. to trade with later as well. Yeah. Yeah, but it's also like maybe you just want to get it over with and pay the loan back and it yeah, was a mistake to take the loan in the first place. Well, I think what God allowed is for him to see that he's capable of being profitable if he sticks to discipline. I feel like everything that's ever good that's happened to me has been God's fault and everything that's bad that has happened has been my fault. What? I have something to say about that as well. He said everything. that he feels like everything that that's good that happened to him. Yep. God is the reason why it happened. But everything that was wrong that happened to him, he's responsible. Right, which I see why he sees it that way, but it's not also true. Mm -hmm. Again, God accounts for both and allows both things to happen because for you to be a formidable person, successful, whatever, adversity, challenge, hardship, they mold you. So I think his attitude, like you were saying earlier, is I see where he's coming from, but it's not the best because he has to understand that when it's good, it'll be good. When it's bad, it'll be bad. And God is, he sees all of it. Mm -hmm. So he just has to do his best to show God, regardless of what God puts him through, he can handle it and grow from it. That's my opinion. Mm -hmm. My third, God's given me a third chance, and and that chance not making money, maybe me helping you, helping you avoid the pain that I went through, and hopefully you learned something from this video that could help you avoid all this, and prevent you from going into this dark path that I went through these last three years. So, um, hopefully, you learned something. I'm gonna show you the video where I break down mentally there are times where you're like bro maybe trading i took a year off there was times where trading was really taking a toll on my mentality it felt like i was feeling and just like you said i think the hardest part about trading is not just dealing with the losses it's disappointing the people you love you know what i mean i remember at the time i had um i'll talk about this in more depth later on maybe on one of our conversations but um you know i had a I had, long story short, i had some things that i gave up or sacrificed in order to do this and it wasn't paying off in the beginning right and mm -hmm. you know sometimes your wife will ask oh you know how's it going you know is it good today you know how's it looking are you gonna pass the challenge and all of you're like oh yeah soon every day is soon right mm -hmm. and uh and it never goes and eventually just you get to a point where you look at yourself like bro like yeah maybe, yeah. maybe this is not for you you know what i mean so yeah i know what he's going through it's pretty tough well yes if you got a major <laughs> major problem major major problem with yeah. gambling addiction and stuff definitely stop but if you got like a little little issue I'm like, I'm considering even to do some cognitive behavioral therapy and mm -hmm. maybe, um, and maybe there's like little tweaks to make so that I can 
get myself to a state where I can just do trading live without having any anxiety. Like yeah. Say. So like I have no like no negative emotions. Left. But what is most important is to identify this before it gets out of hand. So if you're addicted, right? Keyword is if he seems to have struggles or challenges with addiction. That's what led him to this point. If you're not addicted, I'm not saying ignore his advice. Advice. I'm saying you obviously could still learn from. But I'm saying his key point was that if you're addicted, if you're not addicted and you feel like giving up and stuff, just understand like what we've been saying. This is bro. It happens to everybody. Everyone loses money, loses a lot of money, especially before they get to see success. Um, but I would say my biggest takeaway from this video is fix. Like, if you're going to be a successful trader or in anything you do, you got to fix yourself. This is what trading is about. Trading has very little to do with your strategy and all that. It has everything to do with who you are as a person. Marcus was just talking about the flow state and, you know, putting certain things in place so you can do certain things. It's about him, right? And the things that Marcus will put in his life is different than what the things I got to put in my life to work on me. So we, we had a conversation, I think uh, it's in one of our, uh, the videos he uploaded, but he talked about his style of trading and I talked about mine mm -hmm. and I hate, you know what I mean? Like, let's say being wrong. He was like, I don't even care about that. I don't like when I can't manage my trades, right? So personality, everyone is different. And what happened to him is relatable, but essentially if you're watching this, fix yourself. This is about you, okay? The things that he had problems with, it seeped into his trading. Okay, his gambling addictions is what got into his trading. When I was trading and, you know, as a trader, I'm still developing. I don't consider myself a good or successful trader. But the things that were affecting me before are all habits. Your inability to hold trades or to uh, stick to your plan or to be all these things, it's about us. So long story short, the takeaway from this video is fix yourself or else your trading will never be fixed. That's that's my takeaway. Yes, yeah, for some people, it may just be better not to do it at all. If you're really... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you're really like a gambling addict, like you said, 